Hi, I'm Cassie. And I'm Mariah. And this is the Cassie and Mariah Show, a podcast where two long-distance internet friends, that's us, discuss navigating their 20s through disability and chronic illness. Mariah, how's your week been? My week's been a week. Um, Not too much going on. I did start physical therapy for some back pain that I've been dealing with, so... Um, I'm enjoying that so far because I do like getting a back massage that my insurance pays for. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Nice. I ordered some new stuff for new jewelry that I'm working on for the spring. I started a new anime show with my friend. It's called Chainsaw Man. It's been very fun. And I am trying to sit through and enjoy all of the Star Wars movies for the first time, I've never seen, like, anything with the franchise. Me neither. So, um, I watched a recap of The Phantom Menace, and then I watched Attack of the Clones, which, like, we're going in, like, episode number order and not release order. So, it's been fun. I like it. It's okay. You know, it's... <laughs> it's it's fun, but that's it. <laughs> what are you up to this week? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That also reminds me, so one of the things, uh, yesterday, well, for a while we've been working on um, cleaning out, like, stuff that we've just had forever and have been meaning to get rid of or go through. Um, Any, you know, anyone out there listening, if you have children or even if you don't, um, the biggest gift you can give the people in your life is going through all of your shit before you die. Um... (laughs) I say this as somebody who has um, had to help clean out a lot of relatives' houses, and they end up having so much stuff, and we have to go through all of it when they're dead. Um, Sorry if that's morbid, but that's just part of life. Anyway, so uh, we've been, we're pretty diligent now, because we've had to clean out so many people's houses, about regularly going through our stuff and getting rid of things we don't need. Yesterday, one of the boxes we went through was our old Laserdisc movies, are you familiar with laser discs? I have. I'm like looking at you with complete like blank. I have no idea what that means. That's the thing is I don't think most people know. They existed between VHSs and DVDs. And they are basically DVDs that are the size of like vinyl records. What? Um, but they're movies. And so depending how long the movie was, you'd have to flip it or whatever. Or there'd be multiple discs. Like it literally was like the movie version of vinyl records like for music. I am shocked because I've only ever had VHS tapes and like DVDs. Yeah, well, it's like I and I guess when my parents got it, the guy at the technology store, I don't know where they got it, um was like um was like, you know, there's these things come in, they're called DVDs and my dad was like, "Yeah, right." Yeah, right. And so, um we have like I don't know we had to have had like 40 or 50 of these discs and they were not cheap so they really made an investment here um that now nobody cares about or wants in their life <laughs> but that reminded me because we had two star wars movies and they're just so cool because it's like obviously dvds are and vhs's are about the same size in terms of how big the the cover is and stuff and I don't know, I feel like just in comparison, like, these are literally the size of a vinyl record, and so the covers are just so beautiful, and they're in such good condition and stuff, and it's just, like, I was, like, obviously these sell for nothing, and so we'd just be, like, donating them if we were to get rid of them, but so I was, like, we're keeping these because I think I want them someday because, I don't know, they're just so pretty to look at. I was gonna say, like, yeah, like, I feel like they would even just be cool, like, art pieces to hang yes. out. Even if you're not into the movies, just because of how, like, because I know, like, the box art for the movies, you know, it are so beautiful and that, like, atmospheric space, like, I would, I would hang those up. Yes, exactly, and they're just, it's such good quality, because obviously DVDs and VHS, they're just so small that they can only be of such like artistic quality and so it's just like I don't know it's pretty amazing to me and we had a lot of like popular movies from like the early 2000s and um, late 90s and stuff and it's just very cool I only remembered that we had Lion King because I must have remembered watching it as a kid but (laughs) um but anyway so that was a part of what I did this week amazing Um, 
but um otherwise this week was kind of a big week for me because um I think I've mentioned before um but I've really just mainly been at home this year because um I've just been helping caregive for my mom and making sure that I don't get her sick as she recovers from her transplant and so um this was my first week beginning to re-emerge into the world um Um. and I feel like a little COVID baby who doesn't know how to socialize but um on Wednesday, I went to see the Louis Tomlinson documentary with my friend, and it was so fun. I, it just, I don't know, it just made me so happy. Um, I, I, it is exhausting to reemerge into the world, but, um, I don't know, it just made me so happy. I love music documentaries, I love music, I love One Direction, I just love all of the things. We love Louie. We do. And it made me so excited to see him this summer. I was already excited, but I just, oh, it just warmed my heart so much. And then um, the other big thing this week, um, I mean, I gave testimony twice this week to various public governing bodies. Um, Wednesday, I went and, well, I didn't went anywhere. (laughs) I (laughs) rolled out of bed. (laughs) five minutes before the meeting started and yelled at try well I didn't yell I politely told them to not increase fares and then um on Thursday I did have to get out of bed at the crack of dawn not really but for me anything before like 10 is the crack of dawn um <laughs> to drive down to my county commission meeting um to help raise hell because um one of my county commissioners decided to reverse her vote a month after having voted the first time to basically we were supposed to be getting um over 100 units of transitional housing in my county and it had passed it was all ready to go it was going to open this summer and then literally this week um somebody reversed their vote and so now the project uh is not moving forward anymore so a bunch of us went down to basically yell at her about it um again i say yell we 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 were very polite politely (laughs) scolded (laughs) politely scolded people brought receipts it was i mean i don't know it was powerful but it was also extremely upsetting because just having to sit there and listen to them spout a bunch of misinformation and um just really horrible things the way they talk about homeless people so it was not great but um you know just a week in the life of being politically aware unfortunately (laughs) well I don't know ignorance truly is bliss but uh that's not how we make a better world so and then um the last thing I did this week is just um I went through all of my like cds and vinyl that I have um, to just kind of clear some of it out, only because we had come across a box of records that I had cleaned out previously, and so I was like, huh, I'm sure there's probably more I want to get rid of now, because it's been a few years, and we never got rid of those ones, so might as well add some more to the box, and, um, and it was, like, kind of interesting doing that yesterday, because it's, like, it felt kind of relevant to what we're talking about today, which is this idea of, uh, comfort media, and, I found that a lot of the things that I was getting rid of were things that used to be comfort media for me, and now it's almost like they're uncomfortable, because a lot of it was, like, music I listened to in high school, and it's, like, I have grown so much as a person that it's, like, I don't know, there's something with, like, um, with, like, senses and, like, memory that it's just, like, hearing that music just instantly takes you back to that place, but not in a good way all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I, I definitely relate to that. Like, I don't want to remember being 16 all the time. (laughs) Unless it's One Direction. (laughs) (laughs) That's completely different. One Direction will always have good memories with me. Um, but I totally relate where a lot of these bands, like, I have, like, a lot of vinyls or a lot of CDs, and I, I look at this music, and I'm like, I'm a totally different person, and, like, a lot of these people turned out to be horrible people, so you don't want any connection to them anymore. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was a big, big part of it, because I just have my vinyl, like, in a tote, and it's kind of inconvenient, so it doesn't end up getting 
played very often right now. It's like, so I don't see it very often. So then I was like, just interesting to realize that like, you know, music and art and various media can be such an important piece of your life and then eventually it's like it's become so associated with the time in your life that like now it's like it loses that meaning over or it like holds that meaning forever and so then when you're a different person it's like yeah it's it's like uncomfortable to revisit yeah i i can relate to that a lot um especially with music you know, and going to these concerts and, you know, having a lot of friends that so yeah, you associate with those, mu- you know, those musicians and stuff. And um, I guess it's just a really big growing and changing time when, you know, it comes to re-listening to that stuff. Like, just thinking about, like, wow, like, I'm not that same person anymore that enjoys this type of music or I'm not the same person that, you know, and enjoys, like, the people you were around when you were listening to that music. And I, um, I don't know. I definitely relate to it, though. I have a lot of vinyls I need to decide if I want to keep or get rid of. A lot of bands I don't like, don't want to think about anymore. I know. Well, that's the other thing, too, is I'm like, now that I'm not regularly going to shows, I'm like, have I complete? Have I completely fallen out of pop punk? Is there ever any going back? I don't know. It was such, like, a part of my high school and, like, early college life, but I'm just like, I... I am such a pop girly at heart. I don't know what to say. (laughs) No, I I get that. Like, when I go back and listen to any, like, you know, it's... Okay, I don't know what to call music I listened to in high school because people refer to it as metalcore, but then, like, they would say, like, metalcore doesn't exist. And I'm like, okay, like, so I don't know what you want to call this. I guess alternative. And I think Screamo is a stupid name to call it, so... I don't go back and listen to that any, that music anytime because I'm just like, oh, like some of this is a little rough and it's okay. People didn't like it back then. And you know what? I, don't, I get it. Like, <laughs> I, I get it why people didn't like this music. But like as an angsty teen, it was there for you. Yeah, it was there for me. And I always imagined listening to it in my car going to work or whatever. And I'm like, no, now I listen to Harry Styles in the car going to work. Yes. Like, or I listen to Taylor Swift sometimes, <laughs> where I think it's really funny, because in high school, I was one of those, like, I don't like Taylor Swift. Like, oh, I don't like her music. It's not hard enough for me. And it's like, all too well, 10-minute version's a good song. And it goes hard. You you know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And it's like, I could totally see myself when, when, it's, when it feels safe for me to go to shows again, like, going in, seeing, like, Knuckle Puck or Real Friends or something, um for the memes but um right uh, but it's just like yeah I, I just don't find myself listening to that anymore um I've honestly like over the past few years because of not going to shows have really reverted to my old music listening habits which for me like um I uh, one of the things that I consider comfort media is like whatever current album I'm listening to so like this has been this way my whole life and I think it's because of how I was introduced to music like I was really I was raised on like country radio like my parents like yeah, they had, like, records and stuff from growing up and whatnot, but, like, really, like, anytime we were in the car or whatever, it was, like, we were listening to just country radio. Like, we weren't listening to, like, specific albums or specific artists necessarily, and so then when I became a Taylor Swift fan, like, literally, like, first album in, like, the second that album came out, it was, like, okay, then I listened to that album all the time, and then, like, the same thing with her consecutive albums until I eventually just discovered One Direction, did the same thing with them, and then really it wasn't until I discovered, like, local music and, like, the whole, like, pop punk thing and just all of that and going to shows all the time that I was listening to a ton of albums, and so it's, like, really, I was so used to, like, listening to just one album, like, over and over and just spending a lot of time with it that now, like, I think that is just default how I enjoy music as opposed to like listening to everything a little bit yeah i i would do that a lot too um i remember uh, there was there would be so many albums where i would like it would come out i would listen to it and be like yeah i'm not gonna stop listening to this anytime soon like one of the biggest ones i could think about was the um turnstile album Nonstop feeling i listened to that every day in high school for like a few solid months and I just remember like walking the hallway and I felt like I would 
walk to the beat of the music and then I was like I think this is really noticeable <laughs> <laughs> that I'm I'm walking to this but um it just it was such a good I like the experience of like listening to an album fully you know like I never even then like I didn't really make too many playlists unless I was going to a concert where like there'd be multiple bands on the list you know on the bill so I would add like a bunch of their songs to a playlist but I just think something nowadays where like I don't I don't do often is listen to albums in full. Oh really? That's yeah, that's interesting. I feel like I still do it, although I do also have playlists, especially like when I was on Tech Talk a lot, I was saving individual songs more and so that was really my big playlist era. But um I don't know, it's just like I've always like yeah, like when I I guess when I do make playlists it's more so for like the car or just like whatever, but um or it's, like, an entire discography from an artist or something. Like, I just did that with Louis because now now I'm in my Louis era. Um, but, um, <laughs> like, speaking of which, it's, like, I clean out all of these, like, CDs and records and stuff. And then I immediately go and buy not one but two copies of Louis's new album on cassette. Because he had to make it in a way where the back covers say the album title if you have all three. Well, of course, one of them is sold out. So I only got two of them. But... <laughs> the way I would have and then I saw a tweet today that he sold over a hundred thousand units of the album in the US and I was like did I help pass the threshold by buying two copies yesterday I don't know um, but I could totally look through like my music library and just be like yep like I listened to Copacetic by Knucklepuck like most of 2015 to 2016 like it's just like that like that is the type of or like I don't know just like obviously every One Direction album or um I don't know things like that and it's just like now it's like for me it's like Gracie Abrams album literally can't stop listening to it it's just like I just my music listening habit is to listen to an album that I get hooked on and that like I will listen to it over and over and over until I burn out on it and so when I noticed that happening like with the Gracie album I was like okay well I need to burn out on it quick because I want to do this with the Boy Genius album when it comes out yeah I feel like I did that with their the Boy Genius um singles that came out earlier this year uh because Emily I'm sorry just slaps and I would put that on in the car all the time and now I'm like okay like I definitely burnt myself out from listening to those three songs um would just end up like going to like early Mitski albums and picking out my favorite music from those albums and putting them on my playlist because I listen to okay I have a playlist that's a driving playlist because I listen to it hint when I drive and I just cycle music out of that playlist like I will never like I I know there's people who make multiple playlists for like, you know, seasons, months, just any time in their life. And I just can't get behind that. Like, I would rather just like have comfort songs and then add like new songs into the mix of that. One album that I think I will never take off that playlist uh, is like um, Dookie by Green Day. Uh, that's just such a spectacular album. So every I have every song on there on that playlist. And sometimes I do skip. I skip the hits when it comes on the car, but that's okay. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, like, I think where you were saying with, like, Knuckle Puck's Copacetic is how I feel with um, the Bring Me the Horizon album, uh, Subreternal. I feel like I never say that right. Anyway, um, I, like, wore that album out so bad when it first came out. Because I think that was, like, 2014, 2015 for me. I think I was a junior in high school. And that album just hits. It's just so good. And, um... I just miss wearing out music the way that it, I used to because I feel like nowadays I guess with all the music that we are constantly exposed to and you know like you said like hearing it from TikTok hearing it from you know whoever you follow on social media like I feel like nowadays it's just really easy to wear out songs especially because like if you listen to them in the car versus listening to them like in school or after school like for in the car I'm listening to it for a long period of time but I just I miss doing that with music. I need to get back into it. Yeah, it's very fun. I I can't even, like, I can't even remember, like, what it was before my Gracie album, my, my Gracie album, like, I own it. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's just, like, I get so hooked that I forget all other music exists. Oh, no, that's a lie, because before this album, it was 
it was both uh, Noah Kahan's album and Sabrina Carpenter's album. I was very late to Sabrina Carpenter's album, but uh, nevertheless, I the, it was like both of those at the same time. So those the both albums were on a playlist, so that way I could loop it while I was driving to my mom's appointments, and it was just oh my god, it's just the best. It's the best, and I think that's why like the fact that. I can't just like pick whatever shows I want to go to right now is so sad because I'm like no I want to see these artists that I have been listening to on loop. (laughs) So I feel like one of my favorite comfort media like television shows would be It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia which is a show that's been on I think it has like clocked in like 16 seasons. Um, It's like I think the official longest running like comedy series on TV, it has such warm memories for me because I, one time I was in the hospital and I must have been a senior, I think when I was a senior in high school and I binged all three seasons of that, the first, like, I, I think, I don't think it was the first three seasons. I think it was just random three seasons. And I think it left an everlasting impact on, like, my psyche because, like, I think that that show has very, like, the the jokes that they make are very, like, you know, cause the premise of the show is, like, it's horrible, like, scamming people. Like, the, the, the main group of the show are, like, not good people. Um, but it's, like, has really good bits. Like, there was one bit where they get invited to, like, football stadium and they get, like, a sweep in the stadium and they run into the suite and they're like oh my god look at all this food and the one character d goes up to a television remote and goes hell yeah free batteries and takes the batteries out of the remote and <laughs> it was like it's one of those things where it's like it's so stupid because it just shows that like i'm like these people are just will just steal like anything that they can get and they constantly like scam the government because like there's an episode where d is a surrogate for a family gives birth to the kid but then still claims the kid as a dependent on her taxes to get tax breaks and then she gets audited because the irs is like we need proof that you have this child so then because she's a horrible person stages a funeral for the baby saying that he died and it was like what the what (laughs) like so there's just very like outrageous scenes like that that are just like oh my god like this is just terrible but it's like you kind of can't stop watching it (laughs) um it also has danny devito who he's new jersey royalty he's from like the almost like the area that i'm from a lot of his like earlier stuff and also just like there's an episode of it's always sunny where they go to the jersey shore that's like really funny to watch because you see like the areas that they go to and stuff are like very similar to places around me and I love how like the type of like sitcom setup shows where it's like each episode is different from the last so you don't have to watch like each episode to understand like how there's like community the office and parks and rec all kind of fall under that same umbrella of like sitcom shows where it's like the same people in each show and like the problem in the beginning resolves you know by the end with the office like I binged that during lockdown um in uh, 2020 with my mom and that was like not even like every day we were we finished almost a season a day because the way that we were watching it and um with Parks and Rec I watched that after a really bad hospital visit I actually started that before I started It's Always Sunny but during the first episode I got really sick due to one of the medications that I was on and ended up throwing up so I couldn't watch that show because I every time I watched it I thought about throwing up oh. <laughs> and I ended up uh, never finishing it. But then once I got back into doing w- watching that show, I realized how much of a just a classic NBC show that was. I really want to rewatch it because I think I watched it in high school. And then I had watched it when it was on Netflix. But the last it was still on TV at this point, And so the last season wasn't out yet. And then I just like it was so hard to get access to it because I wasn't watching it on TV. And so I never finished it, but I really want to watch it now that I've gotten involved in politics and stuff because I just feel like, I feel like there was a lot that I didn't appreciate about it that I will <laughs> have a much different perspective on now. Yeah, I uh, I think it's a very good show. Even, yeah, even to think about stuff like that with, like, local government. Because um, that's, you know, what it's all based around and, like, getting, like, stuff passed or getting things built. Like, it's really funny in that, like, yeah, that, like, retrospective uh, um, aspect. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's interesting, like, with the, like, you're saying, like, with the sitcom episodes, um, like, each one being different, so you can watch it anytime, because that's so wild about, like, how many seasons It's Always Sunny has, because 
I had no idea. I knew nothing about that show. So that's super interesting. And it's like the main cast is always there. Like it's mm, always mm-hmm. like Charlie, D, Mac, Dennis, and Frank. Well, actually, I think the first season, Danny DeVito wasn't in it. Um, and they didn't get him until the second season. But um, it just, <laughs> it's just one. Like they have like an episode where they create their own game. Um, it's like called Chardy Mac Dennis and they made their own board game and that's just a fun thing to watch because it's like oh like you pull a card and now you have to take like five shots and you like can't like you can't say no to any of the things that you're doing and um it's just a very funny show to that always it's always on FX at like two in the morning so usually when I'm in my insomnia hour and I can't sleep I'm always like oh I can at least put it at least watch it's always sunny right now that will take my mind off of how I can't sleep oh nice I, um, yeah, I feel like I've never really, I don't know. One thing about me is that I, I wouldn't say that I have the best taste in TV shows. Now I say this because I will watch anything that Netflix turns out. I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad it is. Honestly, if you tell me something is critically acclaimed, I'm less likely to watch it because I watch TV for the mindlessness um but at the same time i do need some emotional attachment to the show in order to continue watching um and so it's like yeah i don't know i guess i haven't really watched any like of the sitcom type stuff since like like probably in the last five years or so like i just haven't really but i think parks and rec i really want to revisit um but the problem is i can't stop watching gilmore girls i say this as somebody who the last time I finished it, I s- restarted it, like, immediately after. Like, I didn't, there was no, there was no delay. There was no, oh, maybe I should watch something else. It was like, no, I finished, like, the, you know, fourth episode of Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life, and I went right back into season one, episode one. Like, no hesitation. Like, it has been my comfort show, I think, since, like, high school. I think I was looking it up last night, and Because I think I got into watching it when, like, the Netflix, like, extra four episodes came out. Because, obviously, then there was a bunch of new promotion around it. And I had never watched it before. And so, I was like, oh, well, the, like, I I liked the trailers and stuff for A Year in the Life or whatever. So, I was like, oh, well, I need to go and watch this whole, like, series. And so, I did. And I don't know. I'm probably on my seventh rewatch now eighth I don't know I was gonna say eight I think because last year was your seventh and then you finished that because <laughs> I, I I pay attention <laughs> I I'm watching from afar <laughs> I'm glad that somebody's keeping count because I truly could not figure it out and the thing is I think with that show it's like I don't know I again I have no critical takes on shows I just care about what I care about you know and um so it's like but like for me I think it's like Um, I think it's just, like, a nice, light, funny show that, like, really compared to especially a lot of, like, shows that I gravitate towards on Netflix or whatever these days that have so much emotional drama, it's, like, this show just simply doesn't have that. It'll have drama, but it's not like you're sitting there sobbing or shaking in fear or, like, something like that. You're just like, oh, that's too bad, or if anything, you're laughing at them. (laughs) And then, um, instead of having those gut-wrenching moments, they have more just, like, heartfelt moments. Like, every time that I watch Rory's graduation speech from Chilton, I sob. If anything, I cry more, you know, every time I watch it. Or, like, when she graduates Yale, or or when she gets into college. Like, just all of the things, like, just always just get me every time. Um, and then, like, I think, too, it's just the fact that it's, like, this cozy little small town, like, vibe. You're, like, it's literally a small town walkable community. It's literally what we all dream of. Um, but there's no curb cuts. So, like, what's up with that? <laughs> also laughing because, spoiler alert, we know Rory does not graduate Yale, right? Doesn't she not finish? Doesn't she drop out of school? She goes back. I never finished the show. So, that, that's what she says. <laughs> I, I'm, like... Okay, here, here's the thing. I've watched it eight times. I don't know what it's about. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I I think I stopped watching it uh, when Jess left. Okay, because, like, last year Which when time? I was watching Gilmore Girls. <laughs> he left twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I think the second time. When he left for good. Okay, I don't know which time because I know he eventually comes back. Anyway, 
I was watching Gilmore Girls and I was watching Supernatural at the same time because I could not get enough of Jared Padalecki. Sorry, um, I just couldn't. And then I was like, I think I need to, I, I think I need to put down my computer and like go outside and like talk to people and stop watching um, TV shows. Um, <laughs> I, I think Gilmore Girls is very good though. It's very comfy. Like it really is like that, uh, like a nice warm cup of tea show or coffee. I get, you know, Lorelai Gilmore vibes. Yes. Yeah. Like I think I started watching it like when I was recovering from um, like my back surgery and like it was like my first year of college. Yeah. I don't think it was high school. I think it was college. And um and it was like when I was starting my nonprofit, like there was a lot going on in my life and so it's just like to me like comfort media is literally just like I don't want to have to think I don't want to have to pay attention because the thing is when I'm watching something new like god bless my friends they recommend me stuff all the time (laughs) because they know I rewatch stuff so much but it's like if especially if I'm getting a recommendation or if there's a really popular show and people are like talking about like the thing is I feel like I have to pay attention because people are going to talk about it or like the people are going to want my thoughts on it and I just I I, want to like do it justice and pay attention but like the thing that's nice with like re-watching a show is that it's like it's also just nice for like if I need a quick break from homework or something I'm not going to sit there and keep binge watching it because I can just turn it off because I know what happens. Like, I just need a quick break, like, while I'm eating or whatever. And so it's, like, it's, like, just something that I can just, like, go to, whether it's um, YouTube videos, whether it's, you know, Gilmore Girls, whether it's an album that I've already listened to a hundred times. It's just, like, it's it's nice to, like, go into something where you're, like, I already know what's going to happen. Like, it's not that deep. Like, it's mindless media for me I guess (laughs) that makes so much sense because like when I was watching Supernatural last year I would watch it when I was working on jewelry and then I found that I would have to actually pay attention to the show while I was working and once it gets really plot heavy and stuff I was like I can't do this because I can't multitask like in this way um and that's why I think that you know as much as I don't like to rewatch shows because I guess I just I'm like I already know what happens why am I gonna rewatch it um it's also like it's almost a reason why I would rather watch like let's plays and stuff while I'm working because especially when it's a lot of video games that I've played before I already know what happens so like a big favorite of mine to watch is like uh Legend of Zelda games especially ones that were on the GameCube because I just have very fond memories of watching my brothers play them and um they're just very like I I just love a good like storytelling game and there's a whole like Zelda timeline that you know certain there's like three timelines and they overlap with one another or like you know it's fun to figure out like what games follow what timelines so I always like to just like watch other people experience that for the first time um so yeah that's why I feel like mostly if I'm going to watch something it's going it's going to be a let's play I am so sorry I'm just an iPad baby I just love to sit there and I need to just do something like that no it's good I think that I think me actually I think being an iPad baby is good I I have no actual opinions on iPad babies disclaimer um I don't know I don't have kids I didn't grow up on an iPad um but um no I I definitely watch let's plays all the time and in fact I'm having withdrawals because I have been watching Gilmore Girls so much lately that I haven't been watching my sims I think it's because I got behind like because there's been so much sims content because they came out with a the baby update they came out with a new pack and so there's been so much content that I couldn't keep up especially as the term was finishing and I was having to write like papers doing actual responsibilities disgusting um and so I was um yeah I was having to actually like pay attention to what I was doing but I wanted to also pay attention to what was happening in the sims game because they're showing off all the new stuff so it's like I couldn't look away and so um I'm like now I'm like behind but I think the fun thing is knowing that there's hours of content for me to catch up on yes and whenever I do catch up it will be within a 48 hour period <laughs> and it's like I and you know especially with like when you watch people that stream they stream for hours Mm -hmm. so like you know like okay this is like a two-hour video that I can watch at least while I'm doing something like um I think like as of today like Resident Evil 4 remake came out which is another video game that I liked um it's very like a survival horror type of game and I saw uh 
a YouTuber I like post um, the first part of his, uh, like, let's play journey playing it and the first video is an hour and a half and i'm like oh yeah this is gonna be the bedtime video tonight when i play stardew valley looking forward to it so the other thing that i've been into watching consuming lately um is something i never really expected but also i think tiktok kind of naturally introduced me which is like kind of like asmr videos but some of them aren't even, I think, necessarily designed to be that. Um, but okay, the first one I'll talk about is, so the first one is like, I think I, I don't even know how I discovered it. I'm pretty sure it was TikTok though. Like people who decorate journals, like it's, they call it like vintage journal decorating. I don't know. It's kind of like scrapbooking or just like making art pieces like in a journal, like with a bunch of paper and stickers and all sorts of stuff like that. And, um, I don't know, it just scratches a brain itch for me, but also it's kind of, like, meditative and, like, to the point where it calms me down so much that, um, that it's, like, I basically only watch them if it's, like, midnight and I'm not tired at all yet. I will, like, watch those to, like, help me just, like, kind of, like, calm down and chill out and get sleepy. Um, but that was kind of an unexpected thing to get into <laughs> i i feel, i feel like i've been watching asmr videos for a while and i don't really know what it started with i think it was probably ones like how you're saying where it's like journaling or, or something that you already you enjoy doing and then having somebody else get into doing that like i think one of them was like um a th like a thrift haul of someone showing clothes that they got but they explain like the f how the fabric feels and like mm. And then, like, that stuff's, like, very soothing to me. Yes. And it's, like, like you said, like, that's, like, itches that part in your brain, especially when the person has a really nice voice. Mm -hmm. And you're, like, this feels like a hug. I'm, like, this person cares about me. Literally, <laughs> like, like, when we used to send Marco Polos to each other, that, to me, was, like, ASMR. Like, you would, like, do a tarot pull. And I'm, like, this is scratching a brain itch for me. Like, you're, like, look at these new crystals I got. And I'm, like, talk forever. Continue on. <laughs> It's hilarious that you say that to me because people would say that to me about my plant Instagram account and they would say like this like really this is really nice to me and I remember my aunt even telling me that she would play those videos for my grandma when she was in the hospital and it was like it would it like brings me back because it was like oh she liked watching these because it really helped her relax and like feel comfortable Aww. and I was like I have to keep doing I think that's what was that's also why the plant Instagram fell off. I got really upset after my grandmother passed away. Anyway, um, I I always appreciate that when people say they like my voice. Because to me, sometimes, my brother says I sound like a cartoon sometimes. And then, then I get really self-conscious because I'm like, do I sound like that? But I love that. Yeah, I miss the Marco Polo days. I remember that you said you, you always like to watch me doing my eyebrows. And you said that whenever we hang out, you want me to do your eyebrows yes. for you. <laughs> especially i feel like did you used to have like an eyebrow brush or something yeah i had the little yeah. spoolie brush i still have it but i uh, yeah satisfying. i spool my eyebrows out uh after i wash my face that's related to another one of my current obsessions which is um i've been getting on youtube like the vogue like celebrity skincare routines recommended to me and i'm like I want someone to do that to my face, but just watching them do it to their face is good enough for me. Um, and, like, tell me why Niall Horns is the best one I've ever seen. I still have to watch that one, but it's because I feel like I need to be in a really good, like, <laughs> mood to watch it. Because I know it's really good. It's, like, what, a 22-step nighttime routine with Niall Horan? Sign me up, dude. Like, he it sounds like amazing i think it's just his skincare routine but it is so many steps i think it's so i don't know and he's just casually crushing toxic masculinity while he does it it's I pretty love epic him. i um and then i think the only other two kind of asmr -y type things that i watch um are like study with me's but i guess that's more so just that i want well it's two things i want the background noise like for when I study because music's too distracting I will sit here I will sing I will dance I will rock out <laughs> <laughs> I will not do ASMR my One Direction Take Me Home album where <laughs> exactly. is it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and um and then it's also like the body doubling part of like ADHD it's like they're doing their homework I'm doing my homework I am suddenly able to do my homework so (laughs) that's nice um and then kind of related to the journaling one is like product packing videos but almost specifically and exclusively for like stationary companies like small businesses that are packing like stickers and journals and pens and stuff I again this was totally a TikTok thing um but now I'm getting Instagram ads for them because people know that like people like to watch them and so they're like well I'll just make it into an ad and so I'll be like watching Instagram stories and then all of a sudden it's an ad and it's someone product packing and I've already like been like wow this would be great gifts for like Mariah and Courtney for Christmas so I'm just like well clearly your advertising is (laughs) working oh I love that when you're talking about like the study with me type of things I like those as well. I also like listening to, when I'm doing homework or stuff like that, I like listening to, like, the lo-fi beats or, like, ambient music from video games. Mm. The music for the game Breath of the Wild is just superb. And there's a playlist I found or a video I found on YouTube that's, like, ambient Breath of the Wild, like, rainy music. And it's so soothing to me that I'm like, I will listen to that when I'm doing a puzzle or, like, when I'm reading and I feel like it just resets me or I like watching like ASMR like Reiki videos which Reiki is like it's I don't really know how to explain it but it's almost like a massage but they're not putting their hands on you so it's kind of like an energy like pulling so they'll do like these like nice like pulling like plucking noises while they're like pulling the negative energy from you and it's this like very soothing thing where I'm like after these videos because they're like 45 minutes long so I'm like after this I feel like a clean slate like all the bad thoughts are out like I am welcoming all this sweet energy to me um but then sometimes when I watch these like ASMR videos you ever feel like because I know like you said it's like almost meditative do you ever feel like it's sometimes I feel like it like stirs up a lot of like trauma in my head (laughs) like I don't know if it's just because it's like meditating so like you know you're the cycle of your thoughts that pursue in your head it's like sometimes I'll, I'll think about things like that um almost like that like upset me and I'm like I need to go to bed and then I just end up having to watch like it's always sunny clips in order to go to bed because sometimes those ASMR videos I don't know they just maybe it's like all the negative energy they pluck out of me just still like sits there in the room and it just re-enters back into my psyche yeah I don't know I think it kind of just depends like what mood I'm in or like what's going on in life or whatever True. Um, because like sometimes it gets me it gets me in a place where I'm like absolutely no thoughts at all but other times yeah it's like it literally in the same way that meditation is hard because thoughts keep coming up you're like no I'm trying to focus or like which I mean it's almost kind of the same thing with like listening to every night I fall asleep listening to an audiobook and so it's like sometimes it's the same thing where I'm like my brain will be like thinking about stuff from the day or whatever and it's like you need to be paying attention to the book or you're missing it yeah that's how I feel with listening to audiobooks as well like I will be listening to them while I'm like doing some like tasks or chores and stuff and then I'm like I end up just losing my my like attention and I'm like oh crap like you actually have to pay attention to audiobooks you can't just uh, it does not think about other things it's not like music where you can passively listen and it's fine because you you're not missing the plot right or the asmr videos yeah we just love our comfort media we're just very cozy girls what can you say indeed we are we are yes i just i don't know i think like when you have a bunch of other stuff going on in life it's like you rely on it for i don't know just like i don't know to me it's really regrounding especially like gilmore girls is that for me it's like literally if things feel really chaotic watching Gilmore Girls, like, kind of like how I was saying with, like, how musical, like, it's, like, the sensory, the sensory memories associated with these shows, it's, like, Gilmore Girls is one that it just immediately, like, calms me down, like, centers me, um, you know, as opposed to, like, it doesn't take me back to any other particular moment, it's more just, like, it's almost just, like, a neutral ground for me it's like I don't know what is it called when you like die in a video game and the reset yeah like when you like respawn respawn. (laughs) like like it's like a respawning place for me she respawns right in stars hollow (laughs) 
She's right in front of Luke's. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Luke's also has steps. That is, I, I do sometimes, because I, I just, I really want to like go visit the Warner Brothers set someday and visit Stars Hollow. But I'm like, it's literally inaccessible. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday I'll have comfort media where, um, where there's disabled representation and accessibility present. But, um, I don't know. I guess, I guess Stars Hollow was built before the ADA. (laughs) So if you listen to any episode of this podcast, you would know that we do an ending segment. And shocking enough, we are repeating an ending segment. So we will cycle them. Gasp. We, We will cycle them. So this is our gratitude segment. We're gonna name a few things that we're grateful for and pretty easy. Cassie, what's some things that you're grateful for? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that right now, um, given what the last half of this week has been for me, um, I'm very grateful for um, the people in my community who I organize with who, like, even against all odds, against, you know, um, governing bodies that strongly disagree with us and like are nine times out of ten not gonna do the right thing um like that people are still willing to stand up and demand what is right even if we don't think that realistically we're gonna get it because we have to have hope that there's still a chance and like I don't know, I think, too, also just, like, saying those things and, like, speaking up, like, gives other people hope, even if it's, like, I don't know, I just think it helps make people feel less alone. I know it makes me feel less alone. It's, like, even though I was really sad after, like, the county commission meeting and it was just, like, really upsetting and stuff, it's, like, at the end of the day, I was in a room full of people, like, who were fighting for the same thing as me and, that will always win, well, I would say that would always win over the people in power sucking, but at the end of the day, they do have the power, and they did do bad things, um, so, you know, but, um, I don't know, there's always more of us than there are of them, and change is possible, and all of that good stuff, and then I think, too, just, like, I don't know, I continue to be grateful for, like, my friends believing in me, and cheering me on, and I think I mentioned that the last time we did this segment, but, like, I'm still very grateful for it, and I just, really appreciate my friends and I miss them and I can't wait to see them and hug them oh yeah it's always something to be grateful for and especially with like you know talk about like community organizing I feel like it just goes to show like that it, there's a future where this stuff is like truly possible mm-hmm. and you it won't be such of a fight exactly to get um to get what needs to be done done mm-hmm How about you? What are you grateful for? So what I'm grateful for this week is the new season of the show Yellow Jackets is now out. Um, It's about a show where a New Jersey soccer team's plane crashes in the Canadian wilderness. It's not based on a true story, but like some of the events in the show are based on like a real event that happened in like South America, which is... Like, completely, you know, it has nothing to do with New Jersey. And I'm not watching it because it's New Jersey. But (laughs) just, it's a nice thing to add. Um, I am grateful for, like, the clarity of my thoughts uh, after I have a bit of a mental breakdown. Um, I guess it's just really nice to be able to um, really organize and collect yourself afterwards and kind of realize, like, what needs to be taken care of or what needs to be worked on. Um, I almost like, I, I just like that. I don't know. It's just like the calm after the storm. You oh, know? absolutely. Um, I'm also very grateful for my slime that I bought. <laughs> uh, and it's this little blue slime. It smells like fruit and it has little blueberries and like speckles of glitter in it. Um, I'm sorry, environmentalists. I really try to avoid microplastics, but sometimes it's necessary. Anyway, um, <laughs> I play with it when I read for my class, like, online, and I find it just helps me focus because it's just nice to do something with my hands while I'm reading, Um, especially on my computer because that always feels harder to do. But, uh, yeah, i just grateful for, you know, the days where I could just do my things and be myself and everybody doesn't exist (laughs) and I am the only one that does. (laughs) Oh my god, I mean, you said you were an iPad baby, but uh, I think the slime really brings it home. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, I, I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap on this week's episode. Be sure to follow the Cassie and Mariah show wherever you listen to podcasts at TCMS Pod on Twitter and Instagram and look out for new episodes every Wednesday. Bye. Bye.